We've just taken a look at transformational form for functions and relations. So now we're going to take a look at graphs that are defined not using Cartesian equations, but using parametric equations. Here we have a curve given by x equal to 3 sine theta and y equal to 2 cos theta. We could write this so that it looks like an ordered pair, and what we see is that x is some function of theta and y is some function of theta. And so this is giving us basically a third variable to help us work out the x and the y coordinates. One way to graph this would be like we always draw graphs to make a table of values. But different from normally, we have three variables to consider. Here we're asked to graph the, the curve for values of theta or time if you want to consider that x is a, a horizontal position and it depends on time. There's movement of some particle moving on this plane and so is y dependent on theta. So theta can be like time, as if you're watching a video emerge. So we could plug in some values for theta, uh, 0, pi by 3, pi by 4, pi by 6, whatever you want here. Um, but plotting points is a very cumbersome, time-consuming way to do it. Maybe there's a better way to do this. So if you want, you can fill in the table of values, but that's not how I'm going to approach this. I want to look at this from a different perspective. So the perspective I'd like to do is to see if I can't relate it to some parent graph, maybe with some transformations. So the first thing we're going to do is eliminate the theta. And from the first equation, x is equal to 3, co 3 sine of theta, we can say that x divided by 3 is sine theta, and therefore theta is equal to the sine inverse of x over 3. And then we can take that expression for x and substitute, for theta rather, and substitute it into the y equation. So we know that y is equal to 2 cosine of theta, and theta is equal to sine inverse of x over 3. Unfortunately, that equation doesn't look very much like any basic function I've ever really seen. So I'm going to put it off to the side as another attempt that we could explore further, but maybe it's not so helpful if we're looking for a familiar looking basic graph. So another approach would be to consider not going so far as to isolate for theta, but just to isolate for sine theta. We can see that sine theta is equal to x over 3. And right away this reminds me of a right triangle, so I'm going to draw the right triangle and label it. So we have an opposite or an angle of, called theta, an opposite length of 3 and a hypotenuse, rather opposite of x and a hypotenuse of 3. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side as the square root of 9 minus x squared. And then we can use the second equation which says y is equal to 2 cosine theta and theta is the same theta for both the x and the y equations. So this is the same triangle that is involved for y. So if we come up with the cosine of theta from the triangle, we get the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is going to be 2 times the square root of 9 minus x squared, all divided by 3. The 2 was already part of the definition of the y coordinate. Now this doesn't look like a parent function either, but we've seen some square root functions, so this is looking a bit familiar. I'm going to rewrite this without the square root though to try to make it a bit simpler, and I'm going to do that by squaring both sides. So by squaring both sides we get y squared is equal to 4 over 9 times 9 minus x squared. And now I'm going to multiply both sides through by 9 to get rid of the denominator, which gives 9y squared is equal to 4 times 9 minus x squared. From here then, expanding through, we get 9y squared is equal to 36 minus 4x squared and just rearranging it because it's starting to look a little bit like a circle, something like the Pythagorean theorem, and I want to really make this look like a 1 on the right side because that will look like the basic unit circle. So dividing both sides by 36 we get the following equation, x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1, and this helps us to start to see the transformational form that we've seen in other videos. So if we take a look at x squared over 9 is x over 3 all squared plus y over 2 all squared equals 1. We see that this reminds us of the parent graph x squared plus y squared equal to 1, which is not a function but is a, a basic relation. It's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. However, the red graph has been horizontally scaled by 3 
and vertically scaled by 2. And so this is giving us um, an ellipse, which is going to fit inside of a rectangle. And the center hasn't changed because we don't have any translations. And so we have going up or down 2 from the center and right or left 3. And so we get this ellipse. But the problem is this ellipse is the entire function. It's like walking in um, after the video is made, there's a still shot. And we really want to see the time progression of this. So we need to consider some points that are on this graph. So if we consider the time values of 0 and pi, when we substitute 0 in for theta, sine of 0 is 0 times 3 is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1 times 2 is 2. So we have a point at 0, 2. I'll call that point A, um, corresponding to the time of the angle theta equal to 0. If we substitute pi in for theta, sine of pi is 0 times 3 is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. I'm going to call that point C. And point C is over here. So it's really not clear if we're going counterclockwise clockwise or counterclockwise from A to C, so we should pick an intermediate point. And I'm going to choose pi by, pi by 2. So substituting pi by 2 in, sine of pi by 2 is 1 times 3 is 3. And the cosine of pi by 2 is 0 times 2 is 0. And so we're actually going in this direction towards point B first and then towards point C. And so the graph that we're actually dealing with is only the right half of the ellipse. Now there's another way that we could have done this to get the Cartesian equation, which would have given us the whole ellipse, as opposed to doing all of this substitution work. Now this method doesn't work all the time because it requires a trig identity. Therefore it only applies if we have sine and cosine in the parametric equations. We know a truth about sine of an angle theta and cosine of theta, and that truth or identity is the fact that sine, theta, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And as a result, we can use this directly to bypass all of this Pythagorean identity or theorem, because this is a Pythagorean identity or theorem. So if we make a substitution for sine of theta, we know that sine of theta is x over 3, and the cosine of theta is y over 2. So making that substitution into the equation, we get the following. This implies that x divided by 3 all squared plus y divided by 2 all squared is equal to 1, which is the same equation that we got at the end of all of this red working out. So there are multiple approaches that we could take, making a table of values, doing a substitution like this, or eliminating the theta completely, which doesn't give us something familiar, or using the right triangle to come up with the substitution and then rearranging in transformational form, or using something that has already really done all of this same substitution, elimination, and triangle Pythagorean theorem work. This Pythagorean idea, uh, Pythagorean theorem, or Pythagorean identity directly. So combining this with our known graph of x squared plus y squared equal to 1 and the transformations that we've seen in another video, we can come up with the entire ellipse directly and then plotting a few points tells us which portion of the graph and in which direction the motion or direction of travel is. So let's apply this to a new question in one step. The next one is giving us a graph in the xy plane, a Cartesian graph, but it's phrasing the equation in a vector format. This is really the same thing as parametric mode, where we have the x is given by 1 plus 3 cosine t, and the y is given by negative 2 plus sine of t. You could also write the parametric equations looking like a system of equations, each of which depending or depend on time. So you could do a couple of different approaches to eliminate the t, but we still have cosine of t and sine of t, which we know a true statement for, an identity. And so from here, we can isolate for cosine of t directly to be x minus 1 divided by 3. We can substitute that in here, 
to get x minus 1 divided by 3. Similarly, we can do the same rearrangement for sine of t, which gives us y plus 2 divided by 1, or simply y plus 2. And all of that is equal to 1. And so if we do write that as y plus 2 over 1, we see that we have our basic unit circle. And then if we consider the transformational form, we have a horizontal translation of 1. We have a horizontal scale factor of, technically this is multiplied by 1 third. And we're doing the opposite of multiplying because we always do the opposite from the parent to the new. So the horizontal scale factor is of 3, not of 1 third. Then we have a vertical translation of the center and every point on this graph of negative 2 because both for x and y we do the opposite. And we don't really have a vertical scaling. You could write a vertical scale factor of 1, but there's no vertical resizing. So if we translate all of the, point, the center to the new center, I guess I'll graph this in red, we have the new center at 3 comma negative 1. The regular radius vertically isn't changing, so we go up 1 and down 1, but then we are going right or left 3 from the center. 3 spaces to the right, 3 spaces to the left, and we are going to be fitting inside of a rectangle as opposed to inside of a square. And so I like to draw this because I can draw the tangents to the curve, to the ellipse. And I see the new ellipse for the entire path, regardless of the time that's traveled. And we have a specific time frame here of 0 to 3 pi by 2. So we can set up our table of values for time, which is still an angle, whether we call it t or theta. And we might want an intermediate point so that we can be very clear on the direction of travel. So if we substitute 0 into the x-coordinate, cosine of 0 is 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Meanwhile, sine of 0 is 0, plus negative 2 is negative 2. And the point 4 comma negative 2 is not on the graph. And that's because I plotted it wrong because I had another graph in mind. So if we plot this correctly at the new center, which is 1 comma negative 2, fortunately for me, I can translate all of this by moving it to 1 comma negative 2. And then the point 4 comma negative 2 will be on the graph. And we see that point 4 comma negative 2 is right here. I'm going to call that point A. And I'm going to call this point C at 3 pi by 2 when for time or theta or the angle. So cosine of 3 pi by 2 is 0 plus 1 is 1. And the sine of 3 pi by 2 is negative 1 plus a negative 2 is negative 3. So 1 comma negative 3 is right here. And we went from point A to point C. And the question remains, did we go the quarter way around or the three quarters way around? So let's pick another point, maybe pi by 2, to see what happens in between times. Um, cosine of pi by 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Sine of pi by 2 is 1, plus negative 2 is negative 1. And the point 1 comma negative 1 is here. And so we can see movement this way. If you wanted to, you could plug in another point, let's call it b star at pi, and I'm fairly certain you'll get the coordinates negative 2 comma negative 2. And so here we can see the motion of a particle moving through time as a video ending at point c for the given time domain. So hopefully you can see how to use transformations um, from the Cartesian equation combined with a parent graph to more easily come up with the shape of a graph than plotting all of the points. You might say, well, here we needed to plot points, but as you can see, making a mistake uh, happens very often, so it's good to have two different approaches so that you can check your work. That's all for now.